throughout the book, he he plays it being scientific. He plays it saying, well, we're not positive what the Garden of Eden is. We're not positive what caused hominid evolution, what caused things like the development of more sophisticated language that you find in modern humans versus, say, apes or our, yeah. our evolutionary forebears. But then he'll... Having, having provided that that conditionality, he'll then go on to discuss his theory as if it is established. And he'll yeah. just he'll yeah, dismiss yeah. other theories because they conflict with his purported hypotheses that he really takes to be fact. Yeah, he clearly just flat out believes it. Mm. And he he tries to hedge it in in language that he can have some plausible deniability that he's not mm. just being totally cooked. <laughs> yeah, but if, say, for example, when he's talking about cultural evolution, he says, oh, well, we have no good explanations for why cultural evolution takes place at such a rapid pace. And you think, oh, but, I mean, we kind of do. Say, if you read David Deutsch's work, say, he proposes yeah, which what everybody, I would... Which yeah. every, everybody yeah. should read. Obvi- <laughs> like, he, he came after McKenna. He wrote... Many of his books after so, Terence McKenna, but you might even say he he is in the footsteps of McKenna. Yeah, <laughs> and David Deutsch. <laughs> and McKenna. There's McKenna and there's David Deutsch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but say say with ideas of mimesis or mimetic evolution, we we do have we do have frameworks within which you can describe how cultural evolution works. However, McKenna just goes on to dismiss all of those because he says they don't factor in the essential role of magic mushrooms. So he's <laughs> he's already decided that he's right, but he They're tries to couch powerful. it in terms of, oh, well, I'm being scientific. I'm leaving open the possibility that I'm wrong. But he... <laughs> that's window dressing. Okay. He is sure that he's, he's correct. Okay.